I'll speak in English. Uh, so, uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Oleg Semen. I am Android developer for uh, roughly seven years. Four of them I'm uh, working with Kotlin. Also, I am a co-organizer of uh, Kotlin Lviv user group. And today I would like to talk with you about Kotlin multi-platform. And uh, could you please raise your hands if you already tried Kotlin multi-platform? Okay. Uh, was it successful? Yeah? Cool. Uh, so I've been impressed uh, by how smooth and easy uh, Kotlin work, works with Java. So uh, when I have heard first time uh, that Kotlin is going to support other platforms, I was very in eager to uh, play around with this and uh, figure out if uh, it works. So I created a project that uh, like uh, verifies the key uh, features that should be in production code in order to figure out if it fits uh, our needs or if it's ready for production. And it uh, became quite a, uh, quite a long story. So uh, actually it uh, still continues till now. Every time anything new uh, is released, I update that project and uh, figure out what's new. I uh, do update my uh, slides and I would like to share with you my experience. Uh, so let's start with uh, a little introduction of what Kotlin multi-platform is. So Kotlin multi-platform is a feature of language and tools that uh, allows us to run code on different platforms uh, to provide interoperability with uh, existing code and uh, to share some code between these platforms. So, oh, sorry. Uh, so why do we need this at all? Uh, pretty much every new, uh, pretty much every modern uh, project uh, has similar structure to this one. So in order to cover all the audience, uh, it probably has uh, some clients for web and mobile that communicate with uh, some sort of backend. And the uh, uh, hardest part here is that every client has its own technology stack, like web, uh, iOS, uh, Android, they uh, use different uh, languages, tools, etc. It complicates development. It requires uh, more developers, more uh, communication. Uh, some it, it introduces some differences um, and uh, unexpected behavior, uh, etc. So, uh, would it be nice to have uh, one technology to run them all, even on backend? So, Kotlin multi-platform uh, is attempt to do just this. In order to, sorry, in order to uh, uh, provide this, it uses uh, compilation and uh, transpilation. So transpilation is the process of conversion source code from one language to another one. Uh, in case of uh, Kotlin multi-platform, it supports uh, transpilation to JavaScript, more specific uh, ECMAScript 6. And uh, in case of uh, Java, it uh, compiles to bytecode and also it uh, provides uh, binary, uh, native binaries. Uh, so, but uh, even more important here is uh, uh, interoperability. Uh, sorry, interoperability. Uh, because no one would like to throw away uh, years of development just for new shiny language. So what is available? Uh, as JVM, it works on uh, wherever bytecode runs, uh, like Android, uh, backend, etc. Uh, thanks to JavaScript uh, transpilation, it uh, runs in uh, browser, backend, and uh, also serverless uh, 
solutions like uh, Amazon Web Services and others. And uh, native binaries open the door for uh, many more like macOS, iOS, Windows, Linux, and even some embedded platforms. So now, now let's move on to uh, sharing a code. So uh, Kotlin multi-platform provides us with the uh, expect and actual classes concept that allows us to specify a common contract in uh, expected class and uh, provide implementation for each platform that differs. And uh, before diving deeper, I would like to show you a little bit what I've got. So uh, I have a video here. Uh, so uh, there is three application for Android, web, uh, and iOS. Uh, they uh, do not much, uh, just uh, synchronize uh, messages across uh, these platforms. Uh, so you can guess that it has to be written three times, although it do pretty much the same, right? So uh, initial intent was to do live coding as it is pretty much simple, but uh, it uh, turned out that uh, build process and uh, indexing that other stuff uh, takes way too much time, so I ended up uh, with a huge pile of screenshots. So let's start with the very beginning when we create a project. Uh, so here I chosen uh, something that uh, suits my needs best, like uh, mobile, Android, and iOS. And uh, it's a bummer that uh, IntelliJ IDEA uh, welcomes you with the error message. It says like that uh, does not exist. Uh, uh, it doesn't pick up uh, Android SDK. So you have to click, click that open file a link uh, and specify your uh, address to your SDK, Android SDK, uh, hit refresh button, and uh, now everything is green, but uh, you cannot run your application. So what to do? You click Add Configuration, uh, click Plus button, choose Android, uh, specify name. Oh, where is my slot? Something is missed. Wow. Uh, so you choose a module, uh, then click OK, and here you have. Uh, you have uh, your play button, so you you can now run your Hello World application, finally. That's pretty much uh, easy stuff for Android developers, but for those who aren't, it might uh, take quite some time to figure out what's going on and what to, to do, so I decided to show it for you. And uh, next thing, le le let's take a look at iOS part. Probably you notice that there is an iOS app folder. Uh, it is Xcode project. So let's open Xcode, click open another project, navigate to that uh, directory. And uh, here again, there is some error messages. And uh, what it says is that uh, there is no uh, Gradle wrapper no such file or director, right? Actually, we've been warned about this in uh, grade, build Gradle file. It says that uh, Gradle wrapper in infrastructure has to be set it up. Uh, I'm wondering why it isn't uh, ready from uh, out of the box, because an, uh, every Android project cre creates with uh, Gradle wrapper infrastructure. So there is a task 
that uh, copies uh, what it does. It uh, compiles uh, Kotlin code to binaries, and uh, in order to uh, make it available in Xcode project, it just copies it. Uh, so here, hey, what what happened? Where am I? Uh, so, not, uh, Xcode runs this task every time you build uh, the uh, project, and what it does, it uh, just uh, copy uh, compile the code to uh, Xcode project, and in order to set up a Gradle wrapper, you click that run anything, type Gradle wrapper. One, once it finishes, uh, our Xcode project is uh, without any error. So let's try to run our application. And yeah, it works. Well done. But where is web? When we get back to the beginning, uh, you can see that it it wasn't supposed to contain any front end, right? There is another couple like JS client and JVM server, but this isn't what we want. I would like to have it all in one project, right? Uh, so creating that other couple and taking a look how it is structured, we can just bring it to our project. So let's figure out what uh, Gradle build file consists of. Uh, for Kotlin multi-platform, it, it consists of uh, three main things. Like target, is, uh, it is a platform you are targeting, like uh, JVM, JS, or uh, native. And uh, for each platform, you or for each target, you may produce a few different uh, like artifacts or uh, products. Uh, so you can uh, specify compilation. It might be main and test, or uh, in case of Android, there is a concept of flavors where you can uh, have a free version of application and a paid one. So it's, it is the same uh, concept here. And uh, for uh, each compilation, you can provide uh, source sets. It is a list of uh, source code files and dependencies. So your your libraries uh, lies here. So let's uh, let's add uh, our target JS. Uh, it is uh, predefined. So here you can specify uh, some uh, parameters like uh, that you would like to uh, provide some uh, source, uh, like uh, mapping to Kotlin code from JavaScript to Kotlin code in order to figure out what, what's going on there. And uh, for source sets, uh, here you can see uh, dependencies on uh, uh, standard library for JS and uh, Kotlin extensions for HTML. And uh, it's only about JavaScript. So Kotlin compiles to JavaScript. But uh, if you want to see results in browser, there is something more, like HTML at least. Uh, in order to provide uh, it, uh, there is a plugin, Kotlin Frontend. Uh, so what it does, it uh, uses Webpack under the hood. So you add that plug plugin and then uh, configure it. Uh, here you specify name of the uh, output file. Uh, it will be as a result made.bundle.js and the uh, path where your source code lies. And uh, Gradle doesn't know about Kotlin frontend plugin uh, out of the box, so you have to specify it, uh, where uh, should it take it in uh, settings Gradle file. Uh, 
So here we add a few lines of code and uh, reference to repository where Kotlin front-end plugin uh, is. And uh, when you try to build the project, you will uh, see uh, yet another error. Uh, it says that uh, task bundle uh, already exists. And it's true, because Android already uh, added the task, so there is a conflict. Uh, I've been communicating with JetBrains team in Slack, in uh, issue trackers, uh, and uh, they answered me that there is no easy way to work around this. Uh, so I created an issue in U-Track. It was uh, quite qu quickly uh, opened and assigned, but then uh, quite a long time it was like still. No nothing changed, and uh, recently I received an email with notifications that this uh, issue was unassigned. I don't actually know what it means, if it will be fixed or what, but uh, basically it means that Currently, you cannot use uh, Kotlin frontend uh, together with Kotlin multi-platform. Uh, with Android, sorry. You can use it with multi-platform, but you cannot use it with Android in the same multi-platform project. But this isn't the end. Uh, so basically, what I does just uh, commented out everything related to Android and uh, move on. So uh, the last bit uh, is the source code itself. So here you can see the folder where uh, you can put your uh, Kotlin files and as well resources. So here you can see empty, like uh, HTML page with empty body and reference to that uh, generated by, by Webpack uh, JS file. And uh, the most interesting part is uh, code itself in Kotlin. So uh, <clears throat> thanks to Kotlin HTML uh, uh, dependency, we uh, have uh, access to all the uh, browser and HTML uh, DOM manipulations. Uh, so you can see uh, all the suggestions here and uh, code completion, so it, uh, become much more easy to, to use. And uh, now let's try to run our application. So in order to run our application, there is a, a Gradle task, Webpack Run, uh, which will provide you with uh, instructions uh, how you can open that uh, project. Um, so in case everything goes well, you can click uh, this uh, URL, and uh, you can see our Hello World application in browser, and you can see there is a paragraph, no, it doesn't work, a paragraph tag added from the source code. So, yeah. Next slide. <clears throat> I know what you mean, what you think about right now. There is no like hello world in production, right? Uh, every project I've been working on uh, contains like 10 or 20 uh, third party uh, libraries. So in order to survive, we have to provide some interoperability. We uh, should be able to use those libraries from Kotlin code. Otherwise, uh, I don't know, like 15 years of work, you can just throw away. And uh, so in order to figure out uh, how it works with libraries, I decided to uh, integrate Firebase uh, real-time database as it provides uh, us with uh, libraries, native libraries for uh, each platform I'm interested in. And uh, now we can uh, fill these gaps for uh, 
So we've described the like uh, interface, uh, common interface. We would like to interact with uh, these uh, platforms, and now we can fill these gap for, uh, gaps for actual implementations uh, with uh, calls to the Firebase. Uh, as you can see, there is a little bit different uh, API on each platform in, in order to uh, meet. Uh, Uh, code conventions for each uh, platform. So let's uh, start with Android. It's pretty much simple. You just add dependencies uh, in Gradle file. In your code, you just uh, create our presenter with the uh, instance of this database and uh, uh, just call method on that uh, presenter. Uh, for uh, JavaScript or front-end, it's also pretty much straightforward. You add a uh, node uh, package management uh, dependency uh, in uh, Kotlin front-end plugin. And uh, the, then you can use this uh, presenter, but where you get this presenter? In order to... Uh, include uh, or uh, import uh, some library in JavaScript, you have to use require. But uh, Kotlin doesn't know anything about require. So uh, for such cases, uh, Kotlin multi-platform provides us with uh, external uh, functions and classes. Uh, this modifier means that uh, implementation for, for this uh, code it is somewhere in the platform already, so uh, it does not uh, produce anything for, the, for this line of code, just uh, rely on uh, the fact that there is some implementation. And if there is not such implementation, it, would, it will fail in runtime. So it also uh, turns off all the checks and uh, completion. Uh, so uh, next, uh, now we can require, but next step is that uh, Kotlin doesn't know anything what Firebase is, so it, it cannot help us. It cannot provide us with any completion uh, or, or suggestions, right? But you can do uh, the same stuff here. You can uh, uh, just describe the interface and uh, pass it to the platform uh, like uh, but next step is that uh, next part uh, it doesn't know about next part and next and next so you can do it for forever until you will uh, just uh, rewrite all the documentation of firebase like uh, describing all, all the api in your project right it, sound, it sounds stupid and uh, it, it isn't bulletproof, right? Because uh, when Google will change uh, API, it will fail. And uh, another thing is that probably someone already did this. There is co communi community of uh, uh, most uh, known uh, frameworks and libraries for JavaScript that provides you with TypeScript type definitions. And uh, initially, Kotlin uh, team uh, decided to uh, leverage this. And they created a tool, uh, TS to KT, that convert, converts TypeScript type definitions to what we just did manually. Uh, but it is deprecated al already. Uh, actually, they provided us with a replacement. It is called Ducat, uh, and it, it's, it is intended to provide you with uh, uh, type uh, definition for uh, any JavaScript uh, I don't know, uh, competitor or replacement, like uh, CoffeeScript, uh, 
probably Facebook Flow or uh, maybe Dart. Uh, there are quite quite a lot of them. So uh, it, it it is intended to get rid of dependency to TypeScript. And uh, since uh, 1340 uh, early access preview, uh, there is a, a not package management extension, and uh, uh, it has to uh, run ducat under the hood when we uh, describe our dependency uh, like this way. And uh, with uh, three, three, 1350 release, uh, they even uh, added animation how it works. So you just uh, specify dependency in your build, uh, build Gradle file and then you can use it in the code and it shows all the suggestions. It, it works really well. Uh, but uh, set point here is that it is available uh, in Kotlin JS plugin, but it isn't available uh, at the moment in Kotlin multi-platform uh, plugin. And attempt to use both of them uh, re results with the same issue we have with Android and JS because uh, it creates also a uh, task with uh, the same name. Uh, so basically, there is nice feature that we cannot use in Kotlin multi-platform project yet. I hope it will be available soon. And uh, now let's move to iOS. And uh, if uh, JavaScript part uh, looks a bit more tricky comparing to uh, Android part, the iOS part is even more tricky. Uh, so uh, everything starts with uh, specifying dependencies uh, in Xcode project. So you uh, have to use uh, CocoaPods. And uh, in order to do this, you just navigate to that iOS app folder, uh, type uh, pod in it. It will create uh, like uh, empty uh, pod spec file. And here you specify your dependencies. Then uh, you run uh, pod install, and it will fail. Uh, but fortunately enough, uh, it provides us with the uh, reason of this failure and the suggestion how to fix this. You can notice that there is use frameworks uh, for um, iOS app uh, target, but it is commented out for uh, app target. So you may uh, you have to make sure you use frameworks for both targets. And uh, now it have uh, have to path uh, the installation phase. Uh, but when you uh, try to build project, it will uh, fail again. Uh, but uh, the reason for this failure uh, also lies in the output of uh, pod install command. Uh, uh -huh. uh, he, he is, uh, so uh, it uh, warns you that you have to use uh, dollar sign inherit uh, the flag. Uh, so uh, what we need to do is to navigate to build settings, search for uh, other linker flags, and uh, add here dollar sign inherited. And uh, okay, uh, build phase should pass, and uh, this is only Xcode project. But uh, now our Kotlin project doesn't know anything what what's going on there. So now we have to reference these libraries uh, in order to be available from Kotlin code. Uh, so in order to do this, there is a C interrupt tool, and uh, it has to be configured with, with uh, .dev files. Uh, so you specify language here, uh, list of uh, header files you need to cover. 
and uh, provide some uh, filter and compiler and uh, linker options. Uh, then you uh, have to reference this file in uh, build Gradle file. And also, uh, compiler and linker options you can provide here. I do prefer this approach because uh, here you can use variables and stri string uh, interpolations. And uh, as a result, uh, the options in .dev files and these options will be concatenated. So you can do both here and there. Uh, but uh, the most uh, important part here is to figure out what header fi files uh, should you use and where do you get them. So uh, Apple uh, documentation uh, specify like quite strict uh, structure of the uh, frameworks and there should be a uh, headers uh, directory which lists uh, all the header files but it's not the case in Firebase. As you can see there is completely different structure and uh, what I've ended up with uh, just uh, surfing through the um, pods folder looking for some header files and uh, uh, after some time I found some header files that look like entry point and they just list other uh, header files. So I decided that these header files could be the right choice. And it was. Uh, so you just uh, yeah, so you just list these files and specify these directories. And uh, now you can use uh, Firebase library in Kotlin code and uh, here is uh, code completion. So you, you have all the access to uh, native library from Kotlin code. Yes, it feels exactly like this for me. So it's just crazy. <laughs> uh, but there is good news. Uh, quite recently, uh, JetBrains uh, introduced Co CocoaPods uh, integration. So uh, w what it does, instead of copying uh, our uh, compiled code from Kotlin code to Xcode project, it uh, generates a framework and then you reference uh, that framework from uh, Xcode. Uh, it re is these fields are required by uh, uh, CocoaPods framework, uh, so you just specify them then you run Gradle wrapper podspec. It will generate a podspec file. And then you uh, reference that podspec file from Xcode project. Uh, and here you can, uh, yeah, uh, another benefit of that approach is that uh, your uh, framework can reference other frameworks. So here you specify all the reference for, so it, it, it is from example, uh, but here we can specif specify our Firebase uh, dependency. But uh, the sad point here is that subspecs are not supported yet. Uh, and as Firebase is a list of small, a lot of small uh, libraries that are dependent on uh, each other, uh, it means that I cannot use these uh, CocoaPods integrations yet. But yeah, again, I hope it will be available pretty, pretty soon. And yeah, other issues you may encounter that uh, coroutines on iOS work only on main thread. And uh, generics. Uh, 
Uh, there are some generic, uh, some issues with generics. It's basically they uh, lose types, something similar to uh, Java. Uh, there was uh, some fix from the community, but it doesn't fix all the problems. Uh, the I cannot provide you with uh, more details because it is more issue with uh, Kotlin uh, use Objective-C to Swift uh, interoperability under the hood, and uh, there is some issues with uh, Objective-C and uh, Swift uh, generics, so it is a problem of uh, Objective-C to uh, Swift interoperability rather than uh, Kotlin issue. And uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, conclusions are that it works. Uh, it uh, definitely um, worth uh, to pay attention to it, but unfortunately it isn't production ready yet. Uh, yes, and uh, now when I'm done, I'm ready to answer your question uh, or just uh, hear your thoughts. And at the meantime, let's be friends. Uh, please follow our community, visit Lviv, and uh, yeah, maybe you have some questions. <clears throat> Hi, uh, thank you for your presentation. It's very useful, I think, and uh, very interesting. So, uh, but I have a question. Um, you said about multi-platforming, and uh, my question is, what about UWP? Pardon me? I'm talking about Windows 10. Uh, you mean it, uh, if it supports window, Windows 10? Exactly, but sometimes there is a need to use um, a common code base for uh, such solutions that uh, contains uh, three applications for iOS, for Android, and uh, UWP. So, may I use this? Uh, may I use Kotlin for UWP solutions? Uh, so, there was a slide where uh, it lists uh, all the sup supported platforms. Uh, it mentions Windows. I'm not sure whether it uh, Windows 10 is somehow specific. Uh, I didn't try this, but I hope it it works. I hope so. Thank you. Actually, you need write interop for your code and maybe on C++. Good luck. Uh, anybody? Guys, we have nice presents for best question. Hi, uh, I need to ask some questions. Uh, you say about uh, cross-platform libs, and uh, what about uh, if lib uh, only for one platform? Uh, for example, you have a project uh, on Android. Uh, for example, uh, Android X library set. Yeah. And uh, uh, you need to migrate to iOS uh, platform and uh, you have only one way to uh, find uh, uh, some similar libs, or you have other way to. So um, yeah, uh, you cannot use these libraries on other platform because uh, obviously those libraries are uh, in bytecode, right? And you cannot ra run uh, bytecode on iOS. So uh, my suggestion is to. Uh, ab abstract them away. So, like, uh, you, I, I've been using Presenter here. So, you specify your uh, like interface. You would like to save data, right? And uh, then it uh, it should not be uh, related to platform. You you just use some different approach on another platform and uh, com communicate with uh, that uh, module with the same interface as you do on Android or other platform. So you, you, there is no magic here. You cannot just uh, 
take one code and run on other platform. It just compilation. It just compiles the code to to different output. Okay. Thank Uh, hi, uh, I have some kind of uh, general question. Uh, you said it's not product, uh, production, not for production. Right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I assume you try to write some apps, maybe. Uh, what uh, what kind of apps I can write right now in Kotlin multi-platform? Uh, there are quite a lot of applications already. Uh, so, for example. Uh, the one of uh, main uh, pain points here is that if you uh, have to uh, implement uh, like front end as well, uh, you cannot have uh, it in the same project. The previous approach to multi-platform projects was like uh, have separate module for each platform, but. Uh, like half a year ago or a little more, they changed it. And uh, now a uh, common approach is to have one project and specify it in uh, one project, uh, in one module. And uh, if you have only mobile application like iOS and Android, uh, that should be pretty much good solution, but again, uh, there is uh, some issues with uh, coroutines and uh, generics, so there are also some limitations. So, yeah, I, I don't think you can go with this in production, uh, or you can, but uh, it's all on your risk. Uh, so, if I have uh, some kind of uh, get and show from database uh, application, mm -hmm. pretty simple. Uh, May I should sh should I try Kotlin multi-platform or should I learn iOS and Android separately? Well, it depends on uh, how uh, how tight it is related to, let's say, uh, concurrency, uh, because. Uh, Actually, uh, what it means that coroutine, uh, if coroutine can be run only on main thread, it, it works asynchronously, but not concurrently, like JavaScript, right? So if uh, you can separate your code uh, in isolation without any concurrency, you can go with uh, Kotlin multi-platform. So you can just, uh, you can have like small, library for iOS that do some business logic uh, written once in Kotlin and use it on Android and iOS. If there is some more tricky things, uh, I would recommend to, to study uh, Swift and at least uh, for now. Thank you. Uh, and do you remember what exactly version of ID did you use to generate uh, your project? Pardon me? <coughs> version of, uh, of uh, ID. Uh, uh, until it, because um, a week ago I tried to create multi-platform uh, project exactly for Android and iOS and I didn't found uh, such uh, wizard in Intel uh, idea that can generate uh, both Android and, Android, uh, and iOS uh, projects. And I had to write a uh, build Gradle file manually. Uh, so, uh, I've tried to do it a uh, few times with different versions. Uh, I do update my IDE quite often. And uh, the last time was, I, I cannot uh, tell you the version, but it was like uh, two weeks, uh, two months ago. And uh, I, I was able to use uh, this wizard but it generated different uh, project structure. It generated a lot of uh, folders uh, for source sets for Android. It generated for each flavor, like uh, release, debug, uh, test, uh, main, etc. Et, et, et uh, 
so yes, it changes over time, but uh, I I cannot see the reason they removed that wizard. But do you use uh, Ultimate or Community Edition? I'm using Ultimate. Uh, so the by the way, you can. Uh, get a license here for some, uh, I don't know, organizer can you provide you with details. And uh, me as a community co-organizer, uh, I have uh, this license so I can use uh, ultimate version. Probably in community versions there is some limitations. Thank you. Wow, so many questions. <laughs> Uh, thank you for a great uh, presentation, very valuable for us. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. I have a couple of questions. Um, how much time did you spend uh, to implement this demo? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> really a lot. Uh, because uh, I wasn't able to figure out uh, what header files, how do I specify. It was not covered in documentation at the moment, and uh, I've been I've been googling, and uh, no information there. I've been asking questions in Slack, in uh, Stack Overflow, and bit by bit I managed somehow to put it all together, and uh, suddenly it started to work. But uh, yeah, I've spent uh, like few weekends totally, and a uh, few like nights, maybe week in total. And, and uh, yeah, some time after I've been updating, quite a lot of time. Cool. And uh, one more question, please. Uh, it's uh, related to actual expect. I mm -hmm. wonder to know, is it possible to specify uh, different expect classes uh, for particular, for example, uh, iOS platform. If you want to inject one class for iOS 9 and another one for iOS 11. I'm not sure. <laughs> Probably uh, in in the code, I think no. Probably in somehow in a Gradle file, if you can specify the different targets and then uh, like split uh, this version of iOS to different targets then you can specify source set for each uh, target and uh, as a result you can have different expected classes in each uh, source set i saw two hands more May, yes, yeah, probably we are constrained in a time, but you can reach me after the presentation somewhere here. I, I, will, be, yep. I will be there. That's cool. Uh, if anybody wants to tell about multi-platform, I have experience in production some project. Uh, and come to me, we speak what about security, memory management, and other... <laughs> special things, it's really a joke. <laughs> um, is that all? Yep. Yeah, that's all from me. Yeah, thank you.